it's always heartbreaking, to find out that there are many athletes, who have ended their own lives at such a young age, during the apex of their career. About which, could be called an ambiguous loss. Grief, that occurs without the closure of a death, leaving a person, in a perpetual state of not knowing. Whether by tragic accidents, terrible attacks, or underlying health issues, that even whose fans themselves must be unexplained. But something that had urged them, to take their own life, to free themselves from such dependency. Or they were more or less stuck in a mess. As well as an Australian figure skater's case. Ekaterina Alexandrovskaya, who died by suicide at the age of 20, was an utterly heart-wrenching case. Alexandrovskaya, was born on January 1, 2000, and grew up in Moscow, Russia. Even as a child, she had a consuming passion for skating. And so, she had started learning to skate in 2004, when she was 3. In defiance of her circumstances, and health problems. Nevertheless, her only goal was to want to spend the better part of her life skating, in front of thousands of audiences. Because, she loved skating so much that, she laid her studies aside, just for her lifelong passion. By the age of 11, she has started competing as a single skater, and achieved some kind of positive outcome to this process. A three years period between 2013 and 2015, she began appearing in pairs, with Vladislav Lysoy, and Alexander Epifanov, throughout the seasons in Russia. And that was when she recognized, that her career was almost certainly, come to a completely ambiguous standstill. Unlike any other potential rookies at the time. Roughly she just wanted to change for the better herself. By making her way to another country, for a living up to her potential. Figure skating. She see it as big a thing, as she thought, as long as she could do the best, as she expected. Maybe, was there a deeper reason to why Ekaterina, have had to choose another country, instead of her homeland? It was not easy for Ekaterina, to decide to arrive in Australia, where she planned on cultivating, her own successful story in the figure skating industry. Hoping to become successful, based on her own abilities rather than would cultivate, her complex career path in Russia. And there is little doubt, that Ekaterina was so confident in moving to Australia, at the age of 16, as part of a transfer of allegiance system, under which foreign athletes are recruited, to move countries to improve medal chances. In Katya's case, to partner Australia's first indigenous Winter Olympian, Harley Windsor. The years prior to her decision, to switch allegiances from Russia to Australia, to join up with Aussie skating partner, Harley Windsor, ahead of the 2018 Olympics. In December 2015, she had met up with her coach, Nina Moser, who suggested a tryout between Ekaterina, and Harley Windsor, in Moscow for the first time, having observed, how well matched the pair they are, within the tryout. The coaches immediately noticed the pair, would make a good match, due to similar technique, in body types, plus they were similarly skilled, with complementary techniques. Something that was felt immediately, and intuitively by the pair, and they transformed this physical rapport, into something deeper. And that was, she has been convinced by Australian coaches in Russia, was that she'd better compete under the Australian flag, with Windsor, who would join up with her in the future. In January 2016, Ekaterina has been promptly recruited, into Australia when she turned 16. It's possible, that what upset her most was, the language barrier, and having any friends or family, along with an accumulation of a long string, of terribly poor decisions. So, she seems to find it difficult, to integrate herself into a society, whose culture is so different from hers, at the time. And later, Ekaterina's first on ice rink appearance, alongside Aussie skating partner, Harley Windsor was in Japan in 2017, on which they won the Junior World title. 
and was also the first Australian skaters to win an international skating union championship title. And it was a big step that the duo heading for the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, finished in 18th place. Ever since the games wrapped up in 2018, over the years of not being competed, and also around this time, she tried to manage to make ends meet, as her mother was unable to support her. Without any friends in here, so she would often sleep on friends' couches, following funding cuts to ice skating. Which led to her drinking heavily, and sank into mounting depression. She eventually then got a job, at Canterbury Ice Rink, where she helped with children's parties, and was happy to make new friends. And because of this, she was able to regain her previous sanity. Her mentor, Noonan, said each time they went out, she would make sure to take Ekaterina to the supermarket and buy groceries to ensure she was eating. As Ekaterina was unable to communicate fluently with them. As per other accounts, said, the Russian-born star found the pandemic lockdown crushing at a time when she was also trying to forge a new life. The problem here is, the Australia's cost of living, had stifled pretty severely to her. She was reportedly working as a stripper, in a Moscow nightclub, in order to make a living, through COVID-19. But Russia's Channel 5, claimed she had been forced to do it. In fact, there is apparently no detailed evidence, of proving that, who has been forced herself to do it. It is possible, that her deceased father, who was a credible reason, for her grief, from the bottom of her heart. Her father, was in fact passed, before she was on track to represent Australia, which made her fallen. She had since begun to form a dark path, of alcohol addiction, making it even more difficult for her, to establish herself, and which consumed her from the start. And then, when rumors began circulating, that Ekaterina was showing up to training hungover, her mentor, Belinda Noonan, immediately took her, to a clinical psychologist. A few months later, in January, 2020, she texted Ms. Noonan, to let her know, she wasn't going to training, because she was feeling unwell. It was there, she was diagnosed with epilepsy. After being monitored for two weeks, and was told, she was not allowed to skate anymore. I don't want to stop skating, she protested. Her friend said, as she was being forced to give up the sport, due to her diagnosis, she fell into a deep depression. According to some sources, the report has identified, that Ekaterina's epilepsy condition was spotted, as early as 2017, when she is reported, to have had a seizure at the ice rink, inside the Macquarie Center shopping mall, in northern Sydney. After collapsing at the center, Ekaterina waved away paramedics, and medical help. She just desperately wanted to get back, to who she were then, before life knocked her, but this was easier said, than done, and it reached breaking point at the time, following her return to Russia. The epilepsy diagnosis, and Windsor's, forced decision to end their skating partnership, on the advice of her medical advisors. Do you reckon, that she would be wise enough to return to Russia, or might it be a trap? Prior to her decision, to return to Russia, she had been convinced by her coaches, that she'd better take up another life, rather than skating. She had no education, to fall back on, because, her life had been skating. It would be better for her, to get into any university. It was unclear if she followed this advice. But it is known, she tried to get a TV job in Moscow, and failed. Back in February, 2020, Harley, made an announcement on his Instagram, telling fans that he, and Ekaterina, had ended their skating career together as a pair, due to Katie's health. On the night of July 17, 2020, Ekaterina's life, was tragically cut short by suicide, it was the night, that same day, she returned home intoxicated. And then suddenly and unexpectedly, threw herself out a 6th floor balcony, 
on 1905 Street in central Moscow, after which, she was immediately found dead, at the base of a six-floor residential building, in the capital of Russia. At which point, she left her mother behind in the apartment, where they shared with, it appears at first, that a tragic accident imaginable. But why did she take her own life, in a way that causes pain? Who do you suppose was behind her death, while the circumstances surrounding her death, had various theories was made, but none of them was clear at all. A thorough investigation began immediately. It could have been a suicide, not an accident. Although, it hasn't been officially confirmed, it's believed that, Ekaterina fell off the balcony, of a six-floor residential building. According to the Daily Mail, it appears as though she died by suicide, based on information from Russian law enforcement. There is speculation, that it was the mental disorder, that caused the suicide. Back in the day, she once tried to commit suicide, due to her injury. But it quickly got worse and worse, by Ekaterina's death. The news of Ekaterina's suicide, came as a great shock for her mother and almost completely collapsed. And she was promptly taken to hospital, after hearing the news of her daughter's death. The police combed her apartment for evidence, it was later found that Ekaterina, left behind a two-word note, on the day of her death, reading simply, I love, in Russian. One of the case's first and main leads, that have confused authorities, since their discovery, it's a question that has captivated the public for the years. There is currently neither detailed information nor answer, on the note she left, was considered to be the sole clue at the time, and which had been dismissed, as a suicide note, otherwise. But her mother's side is claimed to be unknown on it. Ekaterina's death, has excited a great deal of media interest, the announcement comes in the wake of the Australians, and the Daily, and Sunday Telegraph's investigation, into. Ekaterina's final years, which exposed missed concussions, and alcohol dependency, homelessness, and financial hardship. People wonder if they had said something, spoken up earlier, could this have been avoided? I think, there is a sense among everyone, that she was never intended to be a victim of the depression. And that may be, where the real sense of guilt lies with everyone. Ultimately, the quest for justice, continues for the family of the victim, who hoped one day find out the full truth, of what happened to Ekaterina.